Even though Spike Prime just came out, don't go racing to replace all your EV3 kits just yet because here are 10 reasons why EV3 is superior to Spike Prime. might be thinking, hey Mr. Law, you did this whole other video about how great Spike Prime was compared to EV3. Well no, I said that Spike Prime was better than EV3 for first LEGO League. There is a world outside competition, you know. And the first reason that EV3 is better than Spike Prime is in data logging. It's one of the first tools that you learn how to use if you go through the uh, classic EV3 tutorials. Data logging is extremely, extremely important. and uh, it is really useful for measuring anything over a length of time. You can measure gyroscope readings, you can measure uh, light and darkness, ambient light, uh, you can measure distances over time. It's very, very important. And you can, with EV3 and data logging, you can strap a very simple rig inside, say, a race car, and then log the g-forces as it goes around the track. You can do that with data logging, but you can't with Spike Prime. The second really important improvement that EV3 has over Spike Prime is daisy chaining. Okay, I'm not sure many people know about it, but the eight ports on the EV3, you can extend that. You can multiply it by up to four times by daisy chaining through a USB cable up to four EV3 hubs. And that lets us build huge, incredibly intricate robots. We use daisy chain for our Bugatti Chiron uh, dynamic display stand. Without the daisy chain feature, we would not be able to make that possible. The third reason EV3 is superior to Spike Prime are the renewable energy parts. You can have uh, a wind generator or water generator, depending your, on your attachments. You can have a solar generator and you can have uh, an energy meter that measures the amount of electricity you are generating through renewable energy means. And so far, EV3 is the only robotic system that I would use to teach renewable energy because of these awesome parts. It also has a really fleshed out renewable energy curricula and that is really useful for your classroom. The fourth reason is the temperature sensor. We used the temperature sensor last year during Pi Day to uh, create a Pi cooling robot. And the temperature sensor is robust. It can measure a wide range of temperatures. It is built so that it's easy to clean. It's just such a, a great bit of hardware that I'm really surprised that is available for a Lego system. Reason number five is onboard debugging. It's not very often that this happens, but sometimes you don't have a computer close by to monitor your robot. Sometimes maybe your, your, your computer has just run out of battery, or maybe you're in an area, maybe even an FLL match where you're not allowed to have computers. Well, you can debug on board on an EV3 because it's got all your motor and sensor readings coming out live, which is extremely helpful for when something goes wrong with your robot and you need to see quickly where the problem lies. Reason number six is onboard programming. For the same reason that uh, onboard debugging is really useful, onboard programming lets you create programs on the fly. You can't do that with any other robotic system. Sometimes you might uh, be on the field doing a, uh, an experiment with your robot and uh, you just think, man, I really wish I had changed this little part of the program to make the robot move slightly more to the left or to the right. And um, maybe you don't have your computer with you. Maybe it's, it's charging uh, in the classroom and maybe you just needed to do a really, really quick change. Well, with onboard programming, you can do that with EV3. Reason number seven is a biggie. We got replaceable cables, okay? So all the peripherals, in EV3 have separate cables, except for the temperature sensor, but that's special. But replaceable cables, it's going to save you money in the long term because that is the most vulnerable part of your robot. These cables, when kids who are inexperienced are pulling your robot apart, they might tug on the cable too hard and break the cable. With EV3, we can replace the cable with another one. But with Spike Prime, because the cable is connected to your peripheral, you might have to replace the peripheral. So it is really, really helpful to have these replaceable cables on EV3. 
Plus, you have the added bonus of changing the length of the cable as you see fit. Reason number eight is the infrared sender and receiver. Now, EV3 gives you the option uh, to control your robot remotely through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or through the infrared sender and receiver. Uh, and these are options. You don't need to use them if you don't want to, but you might want to create a remote control robot. Maybe it's some sort of drone or a rover that you want to control live uh, at, uh, in real time. Whereas in Spike Prime at the moment, doesn't have a solution for that. Reason number nine is its versatile processor. Now EV3's processor is slightly faster than Spike Prime, but it boots up slower. So it's not as good for competition, but it is much better if you have other types of programs. Maybe you want to do a user interface on the EV3 hub. You can insert SD cards, you can insert flash drives. It's really, really, really handy to have this kind of capability. So many uses for the EV3 that you just don't have with Spike Prime. Final reason EV3 is superior to Spike Prime, and this is my favorite, is the option to code in Python. And although the EV3 app comes with the block-based code and a Spike Prime has a Scratch 3 code, you just can't beat a good old Python to give your kids, your students, the full coding experience. And you can do that only through EV3. At the moment, you might be able to do that with Spike Prime in the future, who knows? And that's it, those are my 10 reasons why EV3 is still superior to Spike Prime. Do you agree with me? Maybe you can leave your comment in the comment section below. Until next time, I'll see you again.